along the Black Sea coast. Ukraine is in a race to rebuild its naval defenses. One of the most fast growing in Ukrainian armed forces. When Russia annexed Crimea in 2014, Ukraine's navy lost almost all of its ships, and three quarters of its sailors quit or defected. They said, "Join us. We pay you from tomorrow. We pay you five times more." Those who remained loyal to Ukraine left Crimea and everything behind. You are breaking or almost breaking all your connections with the, with the relatives. As they rebuild their lives and their nation's fleet, <laughs> Russia flexes its maritime muscle. We должны сохранить и укрепить статус нашей страны как одной из ведущих морских держав. But Ukraine's naval rebuild has been hampered by a burdensome bureaucracy. The defense budget has been a state secret. Which created a lot of cases for corruption. The tale of betrayal, loyalty, and revival in a nation struggling to navigate through rough geopolitical waters. In the port of Odessa, Ukraine is slowly getting its sea legs back. Lieutenant Demir Aulin is the captain of the country's newest naval vessel, the Starobilsk. It's one of two refurbished island-class cutters donated by the U.S. Coast Guard as part of an international effort to help Ukraine rebuild its navy. Ці два два катери дуже посилили обороноздатність військово-морських сил та обороноздатність країни. Можуть виконувати завдання в морі по розвідці, патрулювання прибережної прибережної зони. It's among only two dozen combat and patrol vessels that Ukraine has to defend its coastline, its so-called mosquito fleet. For now, it's a meager force, but the bond is strong between Lieutenant Aulin and his crew. They're among the few who remained loyal to Ukraine following Russia's annexation of Crimea. In March 2014, Aulin was a naval cadet in Sevastopol, then the base of Ukraine's Black Sea Fleet. Russian troops in unmarked uniforms, so-called little green men, surrounded their academy. Дивлюсь у вікно і бачу російський, так скажімо, російських військових, які вже на території частини, і вже офіцери, які зрадили присязі України, зрадили Україну, вже допомагають їм грузити, так скажімо, нашу зброю до до них в у вантажівки. Це було досить складно морально. After being blockaded for weeks and with communication cut off with Kyiv, most chose to stay in Russia-controlled Crimea. Aulin and those cadets who remained loyal were allowed to say goodbye before they left the peninsula. Ukraine's navy lost more than 5,000 sailors, about 75% of its personnel. Russia took more than two-thirds of Ukraine's ships. Igor Voronchenko is still haunted by the defections. He was among the loyal Ukrainian commanders in Crimea, briefly detained by Russian forces. For years, they had been allies on the peninsula. Russia was allowed to keep a naval base in Crimea following the breakup of the Soviet Union. They were used to our friendship, our friendship, our friendship, 
Саме страшне було пережити це зраду. Appointed as Ukraine's naval chief in 2016, Voronchenko was tasked with reviving what was left of Ukraine's navy. Поздравляю вас з днём военно-морского флота. Russia, meanwhile, has built up its forces in Crimea and is asserting its dominance on the Black Sea. Росія все робить для того, щоб тенденції розвитку щодо зменшення того градусу, вони тільки підвищувались. І Росія знає, де наші слабини, і вона зараз туди б'є. In 2018, Russia seized two Ukrainian gunboats and a tug off the Crimean coast. One vessel was rammed after being turned away from the Kerch Strait bridge that Moscow built to link Crimea with Russia. With more than 2,000 kilometers of coastline to defend, Ukraine had sent the boats from its naval base in Odessa to the port of Mariupol on the Sea of Azov. Ukraine said the vessels had the right, under international law, to pass through the Kerch Strait. But Russia claimed they had violated its territorial waters. It's a provocation, of course. A provocation that is organized by the ruling authority. Commercial shipping to the Sea of Azov is routinely stopped by Russia's Coast Guard. The costly delays have led to a 50% drop in shipping to the port of Mariupol. Russia actually decided to, to have a total control on the Kerch Strait. I think that the tension is increasing because Russia continues to make a total dominance in, in Black Sea. When Russia annexed Crimea, it also seized several of Ukraine's floating gas platforms. Kyiv accuses Russia of not only drilling illegally and stealing its gas, it says Russia has militarized the platforms. If Russia seizes Ukraine's tiny Serpent Island, it could use the platforms to choke all of Ukraine's maritime export routes. Actually, it's a very small, narrow corridor between these towers and a Serpent Island. So if they want to create a situation similar to Kerch Strait, they could occupy it, Serpent Island, and close the gate. Could be disaster for Ukrainian economy. Faced with Russia's growing maritime dominance, Captain Andrei Hryzhenko was asked to draft a 15-year plan to rebuild Ukraine's navy. It's like elephant and mouse. You see, small mouse can, can neutralize big elephant. No, maybe not killing, them, but neutralize them. Born and raised in Crimea, Ryzhenko spent time at a U.S. naval academy where he learned English and strategy. The former deputy chief of staff of Ukraine's navy now lives in Kyiv and laid the foundations of the rebuild. Uh, fleet cost money. As, 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 as bigger vessel you build, more money you invest. Instead of expensive warships, Ryzhenko was focused on building and buying affordable, small, but agile combat boats. There have been successful rocket tests and trials for two Ukrainian-built Centaur assault boats. The short-term plan was to triple the size of Ukraine's Mosquito fleet to protect shipping and deter Russian attack. Uh, we need missile boats with the capability to, to carry anti-ship missiles, torpedoes, artillery. And this is our like a deterrence core to stop uh, landing operation. If we follow this mosquito fleet concept, small fleet, we thinking that we can have uh, around 30 vessels for around a uh, few hundred million dollars. Ukraine's navy is also battling a new invisible threat, the coronavirus. Ships are disinfected daily and a medical vessel has been equipped to quarantine any sailors who test positive for the virus. Andrei Hryzhenko hasn't just been helping rebuild Ukraine's navy, he's also been rebuilding his life after uprooting his family from Crimea. He says one of the biggest problems for Ukrainian sailors who stayed loyal has been finding affordable housing for their families. You take all your belongings in your car, including fishing roads and moving from Sevastopol. That's it. It's a little challenging. 
You come and you don't know where you will sleep. It's myself just born, my father. There's also been an emotional toll. At Sevastopol, it's my classmates from, from school. You are breaking all your connections. Yeah, this is wedding ceremony. Sevastopol, it's 99. Starting over has been especially tough on Trejenko's wife, Victoria. This is a little green man, a classic. This is a little green vehicle. They jam in our cell phone. Like other Ukrainian officers based in Crimea in 2014, Hryzhenko was blockaded inside naval headquarters and bombarded with offers to join Russia's navy. Join us. Uh, we pay you more, I mean, much more. I mean, Russia is much more powerful. Obviously, you will live much better. You will have better ships. Uh, it's better career. It's a not like a, a conventional warfare when people are killing each other with, with a weapon. It's a brain warfare because your opponent impacting off your, on a, your brain. And we were completely not ready for this. But Ryzhenko never came close to switching sides. He grew up with a deep sense of duty that was instilled in him by his father, who had served in the Soviet Navy. It's a Slava class cruiser, and my father was a, like, a, like a squadron commander, and I was very impressed. It was brand new, and uh, yeah, it was powerful. After the breakup of the USSR, Ukraine and Russia signed a treaty to divide up the Soviet Black Sea Fleet. Rejenko's father became the chief of staff of the newly formed Ukrainian Navy. My father, he was extremely loyal to, to like Ukraine and he gave me the same feeling. Shaken by the tide of mass defections in Crimea, Ukraine's Navy, now with six and a half thousand sailors, puts extra emphasis on loyalty. Before graduating, officer cadets undergo training to understand Russia's psychological tactics. Lieutenant Colonel Mikhailo Yurchenko is an officer in Ukraine's Marine Artillery Battalion. He studied Russia's hybrid methods and trains new recruits at a base in Mykolaiv about the hard lessons that were learned in Crimea. Like many officers, Yurchenko carries a nagging sense of guilt that he was unable to stop the defections. Yurchenko's battalion and Ukraine's Marine Corps protect ports and the maritime belt on the Sea of Azov in the country's eastern Donbass region. Since 2014, more than 50 Ukrainian Marines have been killed there while fighting against Russia-backed separatists. Ukrainian Marines could soon have more firepower to protect the vulnerable coastline. Ukraine has built and tested its own land-based anti-ship cruise missile, the Neptune. But it may be years before boats in the country's fleet are armed with such potent weapons. Very small uh, progress, very small. The system of Mosquito fleet should be missile ships. When Russians will understand it, that Ukrainians have this could change the balance in, in the Black Sea. But now we cannot provide the central. The task of assembling this Mosquito fleet has at times been frustrating and slow, held up by bureaucratic red tape and the lack of coordination between Ukrainian state agencies. 
An investigation by RFERL's Ukrainian service program, Schemes, found that the transfer of those two U.S. Coast Guard ships was delayed for more than three years. The reason, Ukraine's defense ministry wasn't able to sign the transfer contract. That's because Ukraine's state-run defense giant, Ukoroborimprom, which has been widely accused of corruption, was supposed to act as the middleman. Ukoroborimprom говорить про те, що вони беруть в районі 5%. Це є легітимна плата за цей сервіс посередника спецекспортера. Але так говорять міжнародні різні джерела, що є інша цифра 20-25%. There were also allegations of conflict of interest involving former Ukrainian president Petro Poroshenko. He used to own the Kyiv-based Kuznya Nagrybalskomu shipyard that was awarded government contracts to build new combat boats for Ukraine's navy. Ukraine's former defense minister cited national security reasons for refusing to disclose details about the contracts. For years, most defense deals in Ukraine were state secrets. We had totally close process of procurement, a lot of uh, opportunities for corruption. So it was a secret level of everything which is corruption. After years of wrangling, Ukraine's defense ministry was finally permitted to sign a contract directly with the U.S. Coast Guard. The desperately needed patrol vessels were officially handed over at a ceremony in November 2019. Admiral Voronchenko says the U.S. Coast Guard has offered Ukraine three more patrol vessels that will be delivered in 2021. Зараз Укрборонпром не приймає участі ніякої. Приймають участь Міністерство оборони в особі мене і Берегова оборона Сполучених Штатів. In an effort to battle corruption and bring transparency to the country's opaque defense industry, the government of Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has introduced new legislation. One bill would limit state defense secrets. Another draft law would establish a new procurement agency following NATO standards. Which would uh, completely change uh, the way that the, the ministry and the armed forces conduct their, their procurements, acquisitions, contracts. There was uh, very little transparency. That is beginning to change. It's hoped transparency will encourage foreign investment in Ukraine's defense industry and bring the country's military closer to NATO integration. Ukraine already hosts NATO's annual Sea Breeze naval exercises on the Black Sea. And the United States has beefed up naval infrastructure in the Ukrainian ports of Ochakiv and Mykolaiv, so larger foreign warships can dock. Ukraine's Navy chief wants even closer cooperation with Western allies. Нас залишити сам на сам, то ця, я кажуть, ненажерлива істота, вона просто з'їсть Україну і буде стояти вже наближена до цивілізованої Європи. The NATO effort to bolster Ukraine's navy, however, has rankled Moscow, which continues to build up its Black Sea fleet. They building and bringing new ships, submarines. They bring in personnel. In fact, they have now around 33,000 people in Crimea Peninsula. They bring in new uh, air capability in Crimea Peninsula. Under the watchful eyes of President Vladimir Putin, Russia tested a new hypersonic missile off the coast of Crimea. Just two months earlier, Ukraine said Russian jets simulated an airstrike on Odessa, home to Ukraine's main naval harbor. Moscow often announces security operations that shut down huge parts of the Black Sea to shipping. Last August, they closed 25% of Black Sea for the few weeks. And obviously, yeah, military vessel, we can go through. Uh, but if it's a merchant vessel, they need to go around. And it's also money. It's time. 
The ongoing tension has had an impact on Captain Andrei Rejenko personally. Yeah, it's my father, or father grave. In 2019, his father passed away in Crimea from a heart attack. Rejenko was unable to attend the funeral. He was in fact in Ukrainian uniform during the ceremony with Ukrainian flag, but I was not allowed. It was not, uh, I would say, safe. I still remember how we shake the hands before my last departure from Sevastopol. He said, if something happened with me later, you don't come. Despite everything, Rejenko and his family hope that one day, relations between Russia and Ukraine will normalize, allowing them to return to Crimea. I would like to, to see a place where I was born, where I was grow up. I would like to see grave of my father, a place where my grandfather was defending. But Ryzhenko and other Ukrainian sailors still see dark clouds on the horizon and don't expect smooth sailing ahead for Ukraine's budding navy.